Hello, welcome to the Friday, May 22nd, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. One thing I've sometimes seen or heard security people do is sort of try to impress others by stating how many samples of malware they're analyzing each day. And of course, in a reasonably large network, uh, you quickly end up with a large number of samples. But the real question is always, which one of these samples actually matter? So if you are analyzing hundreds, thousands of samples, why do you do this? if most of them are really pretty similar to each other and not really all that different in their function and what they're trying to accomplish. So triaging malware samples is a big task and Today, Xavier introduced us to a nice tool called FAME, which stands for FAME Automates Malware Evaluation that has a plugin architecture that you can use to quickly analyze malware and uh, at least come up with a quick conclusion. Is this something old or something new or is it interesting? In particular, he's pointing out the FLOSS module. Now, FLOSS was written by FireEye and it it does stand for FireEye Labs Obfuscated String Solver. And what it does is it finds obfuscated strings inside uh, these malware samples without actually having to execute them. And then, of course, if you see, for example, some standard uh, library names, API calls, or uh, maybe host names or email addresses and such, uh, that can be useful to gauge whether or not this particular malware sample is worth further analysis. And Xavier is going through a couple examples here, like for example, how to find out whether or not a particular sample may be taking advantage of process hollowing, which of course, uh, one of the little bit more interesting techniques. So probably make some good playing around for the upcoming long weekend. And if you're looking for something to read this weekend, well, uh, this week, uh, Verizon released its uh, annual data breach uh, report. And of course, uh, that's always uh, pretty well done. And the nice thing, of course, now all of these reports have, have their own bias in how data is collected. Uh, but uh, what's kind of nice about the Verizon report and similar is that they are doing this for a few years now. So trends are certainly comparable to prior versions of the report. Just two things that sort of uh, stuck out uh, to me when I sort of uh, browsed through it. One is a substantial increase in the number of breaches on web applications. Web applications, of course, have always been a big target, but I think that's getting worse in particular sort of with uh, some of these library issues and so that we keep having. The other thing I found sort of interesting, it's not really highlighted in the quick summary is that the systems that have current vulnerabilities usually also have a lot of old vulnerabilities. So what they're kind of stating here is that systems are either patched reasonably regularly or not at all, where you have systems that have 10 plus year old vulnerabilities just because they have never really been patched. Of course, one of the problems we all have, and certainly I'm guilty of this sometimes, is to always sort of look at the latest, greatest, shiny new vulnerability when what really matters is that systems are just not being patched, period. And Apple updated almost everything this week. tvOS, iOS, iTunes, Xcode, and watchOS. Most notably, there is no update for macOS. And I think that's the reason behind that we don't have any vulnerability details yet. My guess here is that in particular, iOS was updated quickly in order to roll out the new COVID-19 exposure API that's needed for various organizations to come up with uh, their tracking applications. And as a result, I think macOS is a little bit behind here. Now, since there's always a lot of overlap in vulnerabilities between these different operating systems, 
Apple tends to wait with releasing any details about vulnerabilities until all the patches have been released. So maybe sometime next week, we'll finally get the new version of macOS and with that also details. The only details we got is for Xcode. The version of Git that comes with Xcode was updated to fix a pretty well known at this point security vulnerability. And I got another nice read for you for the weekend. Last one for this podcast, I promise. And that's an article by Sophos about attackers that are attempting to exploit a vulnerability in the Sophos XG firewall. What's sort of interesting here is that they also document how attackers sort of changed their behavior as they figured out that the vulnerability did no longer work and in the end then actually tried to deploy ransomware. Uh, so, uh, a pretty interesting uh, story here and that's it for today thanks again for listening and talk to you again on tuesday because of memorial day here in the u.s on monday